So in this video we're going to be talking about solar cells and specifically we're going to go over their circuit model uh, and why we, uh, why we have that circuit model. So fundamentally all a solar cell is is a piece of semiconductor, typically silicon because it's nice and cheap. Uh, and then when solar radiation hits this piece of silicon, we generate a bunch of electron hole pairs. So we generate a bunch of holes and we generate a bunch of electrons. So this is some incoming light with some frequency or some photon energy. And this is the process of absorption. So this is the process of absorption. But once these electron hole pairs are generated inside the semiconductor, uh, now what? We need to somehow make them useful. We need to get them out of there. And so you might say, well, okay, uh, all we need to do is apply a voltage. So let's just apply some voltage source here uh, with some voltage V and attach this to our solar cell. And then we'll get, uh, we'll build some electric field. We'll build up some electric field inside the semiconductor and the holes will go this way and the electrons will go this way and we've got a current. And so we've got a current uh, flowing in this direction. So a current flowing in the same direction as the holes. But there's a problem with this. Um, and the problem with this is that we aren't getting any power out of the solar cell. We're actually giving it power. So we're giving uh, this cell power. We have to supply some energy to extract the electrons and the holes. And so it would be really nice if instead of applying some external electric field, we can have some built in electric field. So some built in electric field so that whenever I've got a bunch of holes generated and I've got a bunch of electrons generated, they just automatically get swept out and we can use, uh, we can use that for power generation. And you might be thinking, well, I know how to uh, build in an electric field. I can just embed this whole thing in a PN junction. So if I've got a bunch of uh, if I've got a P side over here, or let's say that the N side actually is up here, and I've got some P side down here, I'm gonna have a bunch of positively charged ions on this side uh, in this depletion region. I've got a bunch of negatively charged ions over here in this depletion region. Let's say that this middle region is intrinsic. And now I can sweep these carriers. So when I've got some incoming photon that generates an electron hole pair, uh, because I've got this built-in electric field, uh, the holes very quickly will accumulate on this side of the PIN junction, and the electrons will get swept over here because of the electric field. And this is the standard solar cell architecture. So this is the standard architecture used in most solar cells. It's just a PIN junction. So we've got some P material and some N material, and those are used to create a built-in electric field so that our carriers get swept out. Uh, and then we've just got our intrinsic region inside, which absorbs the carriers. So now the question is, how do we model this? So how do we understand this device as a circuit? Uh, and so let's, let's redraw it below, and let's draw the P, uh, P side on top so that we're more in, uh, in line with how how this is generally drawn. So we've got some PIN junction. We've got a bunch of negative charges, and these are negative ions that are accumulating on the P side, and positively charged ions on the N side, which cause a positively charged ions, which cause some built-in electric field inside the intrinsic region. And now let's say that we're irradiating this thing with light. So let's say that we're irradiating it from the side and we could irradiate it from the top, but it, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of illustration at least. So let's say that we're irradiating this from the side and we've got a bunch of electron hole pairs that are getting generated. So we've got a bunch of electron hole pairs that are getting generated. And these holes are very quickly getting swept out onto this into this P side and the electrons are getting swept out into the N side. And this process goes on for a while until eventually we start to accumulate and this so this isn't connected to anything. Right now this solar cell isn't connected to anything. 
And so we start to accumulate a bunch of extra holes in the P side and a bunch of extra electrons on the N side. And this is going to create an electric field that opposes uh, our, so this is, let's call this E nu. Uh, this is going to set up an electric field that opposes our built-in electric field. It's also going to create some measurable voltage, and we call this the open circuit voltage. But this process keep, can't, uh, can't keep going on forever, right? Uh, because we've got more and more holes accumulating on this side, more and more electrons accumulating on this side. Eventually, our electric field would get so big uh, that not only does it oppose this internal electric field, but these holes uh, are forced to go back to the other side. And similarly, these electrons are forced to go back to the other side. So there's going to be some equilibrium point. Uh, there's, some, there's going to be some equilibrium point where just as many holes and electrons are getting swept out of this junction as are coming back uh, from the P side and the N side. And the question is, what is that? Uh, how do we figure out what that, what that equilibrium point is and what this open circuit voltage is? The answer is that this structure uh, we know is just a diode. So this is just a diode. It's a PIN diode. And we can calculate the current through that diode uh, as a function of the forward bias voltage. It's some, just some reverse saturation uh, current, approximately, times e to the bias voltage, let's call VA, uh, over phi t, the thermal voltage, where phi t uh, phi t is just kt over q. And our, our forward bias voltage in this case is nothing but our open circuit voltage. So these holes over here and these electrons over here that are accumulating in this structure are causing a potential or an open circuit voltage uh, to be applied to this diode. So it's just e to the v open circuit over phi t. And if you want to be really precise, you can add a minus one here. And so at equilibrium, this current, the current flowing through the diode in this direction, is just equal to the photocurrent. So the generated, the current from all these generated electron hole pairs. So the photocurrent and the diode current. And electrically, we just we can just model this as a current source, so some photocurrent in parallel with a diode. And this might seem a little strange because we're putting two things in parallel, which are basically the same structure. So it's somewhat deceptive if you're just looking at the circuit diagram and you're not uh, paying attention to the underlying physics. So from here, we can calculate this open circuit voltage just by rearranging this equation. So divide by ISAT, take a, move the one and take a logarithm. And you'll just get that the open circuit voltage is just the thermal voltage times the natural log of one plus your photocurrent over your reverse saturation current. And this is our open circuit voltage. Or this is the voltage that develops across this diode, which we can actually measure um, when it's not attached to anything. But you might say, oh, whoops, uh, you might say, well, great, but uh, I want to actually use this thing. I want to attach it to stuff. So I want to use my solar cell. I want to extract some power from it. And that's going to be the subject of the next video. So what happens when we connect this whole structure with some load, uh, some load resistance, for example? So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, just post them down below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.